Did you feel looked down on when you were single? What is something you wish you knew before you were married? Is it true that when you know, you know? More support always helps. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, I'm Nahama, and this is Realization, the perfect place for those looking to grow, live authentically, and realize their potential. In today's video, we're going to be talking about all things love and relationships. I'm here with my husband Yehuda, and we're excited to answer your questions. Yep. We've been married for a bit over a year now, and we've learned so much. So we're excited to share that with you today. If you've been following me on my music account, I've shared a lot over the years, different parts of my dating story, my struggles. I even put out a song called I Still Have You about a big heartbreak of mine. And I've kept an open conversation going about this topic because I'm really, really passionate about it. I'm overjoyed to have this space to be able to dive deeper into this topic and others like this, to talk with you about life in a deeper way. So if you're looking for insight, hope, or inspiration on this topic, just keep watching. All right. All right, you got the questions? Yep, let me just pull them up. There's a lot of good ones. Let's start with something basic. How old were each of you when you got married? It's a good question. Let me think. You don't pay attention to these things so much once you get married. I mean, I had to tell more people how old I was now. Like, who am I talking to other than you? <laughs> um, I'm 25 now. I think I was 24, 23. 23 when we met, 24 when we were married. Right. There we go. And me, I was 26 when we met and 27 when we were married. Most of your views on YouTube will probably be from me checking. <laughs> That's how it works to be. <laughs> no? They don't let you just keep getting more views from the same person? I think it goes I'm by... I'm watching the ads. That's good. <laughs> but I think it goes by like IP address or I don't know, there's different theories. I think you could yeah. probably check it out. Too many tangents. Alright, next question. Um, so this person is saying men and women are very different and she feels like her husband doesn't understand her. What's your perspective on that? Can you say that again? <laughs> That's the first difference. <laughs> men and women are very different and because of that she feels like her husband can't understand her. Uh-huh. It's true they're different. I don't think her husband can understand her because how can you ever fully understand someone else? And you only can understand someone as much as you can relate to them. And if you're not a woman, then you're never going to relate to a woman in that sense that they're a woman and you're not. But <laughs> you could understand her as much as you could as a man. Yeah, you can never understand a woman as much as a woman can understand a woman because you're not a woman. Simple as that. But that's okay. I'm saying everyone's doing it. Right. I think that people, in general, someone can't understand someone fully. Like, we almost have this expectation that people will understand us fully and that's what will make us feel loved or feel happy because it's like, oh, he totally gets me. Not understanding you fully is not really a problem. As long as you get you and he cares about you and you care about him, there's a lot of things we can't really understand about each other, but we love each other and accept each other unconditionally. Those differences actually like enhance the relationship and make it interesting. So right. I think if you view it as something good, it will be good. And also, if you have friends that are very like you and that they're women, they can validate you in the ways that you need as a woman. And then your husband can validate you and relate to you in the ways that he can as your husband. Right, and they're both important. You have your friends and you have your spouse and they play different roles and it's okay to not get everything from one person. Definitely. I would like to hear Yehuda's perspective of being single. Like, when you were single, what was it like for you? <sighs> Singlehood. It was the majority of my life at the moment. And, you know, I lived a good life. It only got better over time, I think. I was pretty happy, all things considered. I was a little lonely here and there, so that was rough. But I was pretty confident the majority of the time and that the right person was out there for me. And I would meet at the right time. You know, we, our paths would cross and everything would be A-OK. -okay. And they did. And cross. it was. So <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't worrying too much about that because that would have just been... Harder. Yeah, I'm saying that would have just made everything worse if I was worrying and not trusting in the plan. Right. Capital P. You also had, you're right, for sure, and that's great. You also had less time to worry about it. You weren't like... Okay, I was 24 <laughs> when we got married, 23, you were 23 when we when met. met me, so I'm we saying... We just reviewed that. 24, 25, 26, 27, you might have been getting worried, so you're... I was just starting to think, like, now's a good time to get married, and I... Got married. Look at that. How easy and lucky. That's great. I'm happy for you. I guess I really believe that it would happen. You're a big fan of that sort of 
yeah, I, process. I, I think for me, I finally got myself into that place where I was like, the okay, mindset. yeah, I feel like over the years it was such a struggle to get myself to the place where, weirdly enough, at 26, 27, I was finally at the place where I was like, whatever's meant for me will happen and there's nothing I need to do or worry about. Like, I just, it will just come. just gotta open yourself up It to will it. come when, it, when, when I'm ready and if I get myself ready and hopeful and feeling like it's gonna work out, it's gonna work out. And, and it did. At that time, I was feeling very ready and open and saying, Hashem, God, whatever, whatever is meant for me, it will come to me. I'm trusting you. And then I met you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go for the next question. We're doing great. Someone says, addressing what you tell your old self, which kind of ties into that. I guess not to worry. Like, what would you tell your old self? Yeah, I mean, what I would tell my past self would be, not to worry as much as I did and not to think it's easy to say obviously when it's in the past but not to worry as much and not to get caught up in my age so much or in pressure so much just to let things be and to know that I'll find the person who's meant for me at the right time just not to get too wrapped up in my worries and fears and doubts and stuff like that that's a good point I would have said get a job even though I had a job <laughs> But like work more hours because like I feel like I didn't want to work too many hours so that way I'd have the freedom to do whatever I wanted but then you're limited in money and now working more hours or a better job or just yeah I feel like I could have done better in that scenario maybe I just needed the push the sort of push you get when you're providing for other people yeah um, that's a really good point so back then I didn't need the money would have been nice to have worked more I hear that for me, I feel like I've always worked really hard and wanted to save and save and save. So She's a hard that's worker. just my personality. Yeah, I see how that's something like you would tell your past self to save up more and to just be a little bit more financially conscious mm -hmm. for the future. Um, did you feel looked down on when you were single, like you weren't as worthy as your married siblings or friends? So did you feel like that? Not really. You? That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely did feel like that at certain points, like points in time. There are people, it's like an attitude thing, especially in religious communities or in a community where marriage is viewed as very important and very like status worthy and stuff like that. I would sometimes feel like people were like, oh, she's just single. She doesn't get as much, um, I don't know. I can't, I'm trying to think of practical examples of where I would see this, but I definitely felt it. And I felt a certain like lack of respect because I was 26 and if someone was 19 and married, yeah. they were treated more like they're a woman, they have their life together, they're like better for some reason, which, isn't which true. is yeah. not true at all. And so I definitely felt that at times, but I really tried to remind myself that I'm worthy no matter if I'm married or single, it doesn't affect my worth. And I also tried to surround myself with people who were good people and respected everyone and really appreciated me for who I was and didn't like need me to be confined to marriage or being a mother or any status thing that sometimes people just view as like better. Like this video if you agree with that because I think we all experience that on some level. Yeah, it's definitely tough, but I think just reminding yourself and, ha and surrounding yourself with good people really helps with that. Totally. Um, this question is, how can I not feel like I'm waiting for marriage and basically wasting my life? Do you want to I feel like we this? addressed that a little bit. Right, you were um, saying about, I was saying in terms of singlehood. Because let's say you really um, want to get married and you want to live your life with your spouse and it's exciting and that's really what you want, but obviously we can't control that. <laughs> we can't just make it happen when we want to happen. You just tell yourself <laughs> that your life is yours. You don't have to compare yourself to anyone else's and whenever they get married, that was the right time for them to get married, hopefully, and most likely. <laughs> yeah, you just do what you need to and what you want. It'll happen at the right time. You don't have to like be freaking out like, oh my gosh, this other person just got married. I'm not married. You don't have to you be in a place of waiting. Yeah, basically. you don't, you, you be open and ready. Yeah, if you yeah. make yourself ready, it'll happen when you're ready. Right. So if it hasn't happened yet, then you might be ready and maybe the person you're supposed to get married to isn't ready. Exactly. You know? Like you. Maybe I was, maybe I really was ready at 20. Or maybe I was ready. <laughs> you were no, too young. <laughs> yeah, probably um, it was me not being ready, but as soon as I was ready. <laughs> Boom. It was worth it. I actually always said I don't even know how I'm ever gonna say that it was worth it because it was just it was really tough. It's brutal, but, especially when you're really wanting it so badly and, and it's not there's happening. Nothing you could do to get it, and it's just I went through a lot of relationships that were really hard on me, so it was tough, but very worth it. And the way I would answer how to not be in like a waiting stage is I would say to like you're saying, build a life for yourself, go traveling, hang out with friends, do fun things, figure out who you are, and I think it's only gonna help you in marriage when it happens. Yeah, work on yourself so that way you have what to give later on. Yeah, and make your life fun. Like, 
make it amazing because you have the power to do that. Marriage is amazing and it will enhance your life, but it's not the end all be all of life. You have to make your life amazing no matter what. So don't be in a waiting stage. Go traveling. Go figure out your hobbies. Go use that amazing time that you have to just for self-discovery and enjoyment. And then when it comes, it will just be an amazing surprise. Right. Okay, next question. How do you know if you're ready to date or should you wait until, until your life is more in order? And she basically had another one that said, like, right now I never want to involve someone in the mess of my life. But for how long do I wait? basically um well i had the feeling other times before but it wasn't like sure yeah it was every time i had the feeling it was sort of more substantial more concrete and then i met her and it was just like ding 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 we have a winner <laughs> and awesome. that was it that's great. I would say that she's specifically asking like, how do you know, should you wait to, till your life is more in order? So I think that if you're going through something specifically very, very challenging and you feel like you need time for yourself to just, you know, get yourself in order and learn what you need to from the situation, like it's really up to you and how you feel because saying that you never want to involve someone in your life until it's the perfect time, like, life is messy. That's how life is. So it's like, I don't think you should be waiting till life is perfect in order to, you know, try dating and adding someone into your life. But I do think that if you're specifically going through a really challenging time or a time where you personally decide that you need your own space, Me then, time. then take it and wait until you feel ready to include someone else in your life. Definitely. And if you don't see a way out or if you think like, oh, I'll get married and it will solve my problems, maybe think about that more and remember that no one else can solve your problems. Of, yes. of course, it kind of solves a lot of my problems, but that's like after the we fact. Help each other. <laughs> we help each other out and we support each other and that's amazing, but right. you can't expect someone to solve your problems and also right. join... She brings she brings the good out in me, lets me know the solution to the problem that I already knew, but like maybe I'm not willing to see it, so she's like, come on, man. <laughs> and that's really any support. Your friends could be that for you. Right. I think that having support, whether it's in the form of professional help or it's in the form of friends or family or anyone that's supportive of you, it always helps. Davening. Um, yes, definitely praying is really, really important. Meditating, doing anything that's um, like mindful and that connects you to yourself is helpful also. Um, you can help yourself. That's the big part. So if you think like, I'm not sure I'm ready and I have a lot of problems and my life's a mess, but maybe getting married will solve that. Right, that might not be the best perspective, but at the same time, it is okay to think like, when I have a spouse, I'll have more support in my life, which is true. But more support always helps. <laughs> yeah. This next question is, are you honest to each other about the flaws you see in each other or do you tell the other that they're perfect? He, Both? He always tells me I'm perfect. I tell her she's perfect and sometimes when I'm feeling brave I will tell her her flaws <laughs> and that she's perfect because she has them. Aww, that was so but I only when I'm feeling really brave because no one likes to hear about their flaws. It is tough. She's always feeling brave and therefore she tells me my flaws and I am always willing to hear them even if sometimes it, it's hard. It's hard to hear about your flaws. I'm a little more communicative. Yeah, she's, but... <laughs> she's like a communicative genius. Oh, thank you. Mastermind. So Whiz. Okay. I, but I think, should you be honest with each other? If there's something that's really important to you that you want to communicate to the other person and tell them, listen, like, this is something that bothers me, or you want to say, I really need love in this way, it would really be helpful if you talked to me like this, or you said this, or you did this, whatever it is. I think that communication is important, but I do also think that letting things go and not, like, you don't have to tell the other person every flaw that you see in them. There's literally no point. It will only bring disconnection, so as much as possible, only speak up when you really have something that you think will be valuable if the right. other person knows and say when you do this if you don't mind doing it a little differently or whatever it is. Right. Only tell someone something that they're able, willing, and ready to hear. Yes. If you're telling someone their flaw and they're not like able to use that to benefit themselves and to, to work on themselves then you're just gonna make things then there's no harder, problem, yeah. uncomfortable, etc. And it'll just cause conflict yeah, then, and for no division. reason. Yeah, so and I think it's important to tell each other that they're perfect. Use as it much to as bond. In, a, in the sense that you're looking at them and loving them unconditionally and saying that you're perfect in my eyes. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't communicate when you have something important to say. Totally. Okay, awesome. You're awesome. And perfect. <laughs> Thanks, babe. <laughs> Do you feel that you can get used to and take for granted the love that you get? I think that's a really <laughs> good question. What do you have to say? You go first. Sure. 
Um, I think yes. Whenever you have something good, it's very hard to remind yourself of how amazing it is and not to get used to it to the point where you take it for granted. I think that's just how we were made. That's how human beings are. It's important to remind yourself sometimes for me thinking back to like when we met and how I was feeling in my you know years up to meeting him and just reminding myself of how amazing he is, listing his qualities in my head, just reminding myself that there's so much to be grateful for and, and really appreciate all the love that he gives me is something that I have to work on because we get used to things. Automatically you get used to things and you're, you think it's normal. You're getting so much more love than you ever were, but if he's not doing something right and you get upset, whatever it is, I try to remind myself to to really appreciate and, and keep trying to look at it again from like a new fresh perspective so that I don't take it for granted because it would be a shame you know to not appreciate love that the other person's giving you and to make it almost seem routine and right. not a big deal because it is a big deal huge deal agreed well said um yeah I agree sure with what you're saying except maybe I don't think we can take it for granted because like as our love grows stronger, like we raise the bar and the level gets higher and maybe like previous levels that were fresh and new and we were appreciating, you know, we weren't taking them for granted then because they were fresh and new and appreciated. As we up the game and love each other more and longer and get to know each other better and better over the years, which never stops, like whatever level we're on, we're appreciating and we're every new way we learn how to love each other and, you know, give to each other. We're definitely appreciating that. And the older levels, um, sometimes, you know, they're just part of the package and you don't really actively, you don't actively appreciate it. Something right. Amazing. So you take those for granted, but you're not taking the love for granted. You're way ahead of that. You're almost taking what levels like one through 10 for granted, but right. because you're growing in your love, you're building a tower. Always, there's always so. going to be something new that you're like, right. wow, I feel like he's really there for me so much in this new way right. and so there's always something new if you are conscious to build your love then you'll never take it for granted right like that's what you're saying right like when you're at the top of the tower and you're taking in the view you're not thinking about like the first level or the second level you know subconsciously you know it's there and it's important and that's what's putting you at this amazing high place you're at but you're very aware of you know the the floor you're standing on and like wow i'm so high up in the whole tower but like we're building a tower for life and and when you're on the top and you're feeling good on top of the world with each other, everything you are taking for granted, but you're so appreciative of it. The forefront is, you know, what's closest to you and what at the level you're at. Um, I think that's really insightful. I really like that a lot. Okay, I just thought of it. Thanks. It's awesome. I think it's a really good perspective. Next question. What is something you wish you knew before you were married? With regards to cooking, <laughs> I used to like to cook before I was married, but like I was lazy and was happy to let other people do it. But like when you're the one cooking, and I already knew this, I don't think if I was really aware of how amazing it is to be the one cooking and like you could just make all sorts of things whenever you want and buy ingredients and it's just really fun and great and tasty and I love my own cooking. So I would have been like... He's an amazing cook. This is part of he like... He actually cooks most of our dinners and... Most well, I just had a head start on the hummus <laughs> building her, <Catching> up. <laughs> her recipe repertoire, like nobody's business. I love her cooking. Really. Thanks. It's sort of like a message to your older self combined with like a uh, knowledge. I would have given myself the thing to know by telling myself, cook more for yourself, it's worth it, it's awesome, it's fun, and it's so rewarding. I, you know, like some people are like, it's so hard to cook, I'm lazy, blah blah blah. When you're eating that food, it's like you enjoy it way more than if someone else made it for you. That's just personal. Yeah, I'm still having a hard time with cooking and I don't necessarily feel that way, but Sometimes I I'm lazy. love that he loves to cook and it works right. out for us, so right. that's good. Sometimes I don't want to cook because I forget this, but like, it's worth it. Something I wish I knew before marriage is that marriage is messier than most people admit. I wish I would have known that it's okay to let things take time. Like it's okay if it takes time for you to learn the other person and how they work. It's okay if things are not perfect, are not like a movie, if all aspects of marriage just take time to adjust and it takes time to get used to and it takes time to get better. That's something I wish I knew. Because although people say, you know, marriage is hard work, blah, blah, blah. I don't even necessarily like when people say that, but the <laughs> point is, is that it's not about it being hard work. It's about things take time to develop and it's okay if things are not flowing perfectly from day one. It takes time to get into a rhythm, to understand each other, to learn each other in all different ways. And, and it's okay if it's not what you thought it would be. Right. It's okay if it doesn't meet that high level expectation or movie expectation or whatever it is. I would have put less pressure on myself and I would have gotten less frustrated. That's definitely a big lesson. I think you've learned. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
And we're still learning that. We both still oh, need yeah. to remind ourselves that all the time. That marriage is, is a lifetime, yeah. and so it's okay. It's actually good to keep growing throughout right. your lifetime. We're like, we've been married for a year. We should Why are we arguing? <laughs> Right. <laughs> Why am I not happy about this thing that you do still? It's been a whole year. Sometimes right. we bug each other. Yeah, that's normal. Giving just like a little bit. Give, Sometimes. Giving ourselves and each other patience. Just for the pro patience for the process. It is a process. Okay, okay, let me see. Um this is a quick one. Okay. How often do you go to your and his parents for Shabbos? Well, we go to my parents for Shabbos like once in a blue moon. Who wants to go to Florida? She he wants to go that. to Florida. <laughs> yeah. So we only go here and there. Um, also, we've had like different occasions where they came to town. So we were able to mm -hmm. see them without going to Florida. Um, and my parents, I would say we go once a month, sometimes twice if we're... We just want something yeah. easy to go to. Because of the situation in the world in 2020 hitting us at a point we were like married for a few months at that right. point, we started making Shabbos every single week. We were staying home week after week after week. Right, we did us, it for ourselves. Which was nice. We got to, a lot of times newlyweds just go away all right. the time. They don't know exactly how to do Shabbos by themselves or, or it's like daunting. But when you have to, you have to and you get you it done. So we are good at it now. We have a system. Yeah. It works. <laughs> Okay. Is it true that when you know, you know, but like intuitively? And I, I'll go first. Um, yes, I think in the, is, is the short answer. But I always wondered, like, am I just going to know? Like, what does that feeling feel like? I felt that I knew it was something different and I knew it was something real and something amazing. But there's always going to be that leap of faith, knowing intuitively that Wow, out of everyone I've ever come across, like there's some strong feeling that this is it. But at the same time, there was definitely that little bit of like, I had to do a leap from where like, I feel like this is it, but oh my gosh, is it really? You know, you could start doubting yourself and going in circles. So most of me felt like, wow, I feel like this is it. And it was just kind of like a easy, soft, like, I think he's the one. <laughs> and he is. Did yeah. you know, did you feel like you, kn um, you knew In terms of knowing intuitively, um, I think I sort of needed to know yeah. Once I knew that you figured yourself out, then I definitely knew, but even before that I was like, I hope she figures herself out and she's and she wants it, because if she's in, I'm in. Because you basically did know right away. Yeah, I knew. He I was mean, much more um, having that clarity and you were kind of like, oh, there you are, you're yeah, it. Yeah, it was definitely instinctual or intuitive. Um, for and... me, it took a little bit longer. It took, it's also I was dating for a lot longer and I had more fears and more barriers. Mm -hmm. um, so... It's like overthinking things, like once you like keep trying and thinking like, is this one, is this one, is this one? Once it's the one, it you still are used to thinking, is this one? Right, exactly. You're still used to doubting it and, to f mm -hmm. and feeling like, this can't be it. It can't be really happening. I've waited too long. Like, so... Right. I was still in the, this could be it. Right. <laughs> You're in that beginning fresh, yeah. which is great. Yeah. And it was. So it took me a little bit longer <laughs> to figure myself out, but I think that once we have this joke that he basically kept saying, if and what, no. I kept saying if and when. What we were talking right, about? No. It's like if talk, and when this happens. We talked about future things, and I would say like if and when, and you would say. And I would always autocorrect to when and when. <laughs> and I, She'd be like, he was so confident, and I was just like, you keep correcting me to to saying when and when, but I don't know yet. Like. Right. She'd be like. If and when. And I'd be like we, when and when. Right. <laughs> like if and when, when and we. When. Look like, for an apartment all the time. or whatever. Yeah. Like when we were talking about futuristic. It was really things, annoying. It was annoying, but it was also sweet. It was also like, I love that he's so sure about me because that helped me feel that if I decided this was right, that you would be there waiting for me. It wouldn't be like, oh, that game of like, you're sure and then I'm sure, but you're like, no, 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 I'm not sure yet. It wasn't a game. It was just very simple and it, you were there and you were steady and that's a big part of what made me feel like I could jump and trust you and yeah. Also, go me. <laughs> Marriage tips on how to keep dating. You gotta go for it? I was too busy thinking how to say it. Um, go on dates? If you could in this world. <laughs> right, it's tough with the current state of affairs in our global environment. Um, but you gotta think outside the box, which is sometimes as easy as just going outside. In the winter, it's harder. Yeah. Um, if you have winter where you live, hopefully right, you do. it's really cold. Hopefully you don't. <laughs> Nice variety. He loves the cold and I don't. But I like the change. Right, no, having seasons is nice, but it's just, it's too much. Like you're saying, especially when it comes to trying to keep dating, there's really nowhere to go, especially because of what's going on in the world and then it's freezing cold outside, so we don't really want to go out. Although we've been good about taking walks, even taking walks around the neighborhood bundled up, but. What's I think the word for 
staycations, but like for dating. Day in, date in. Like date night in. Yeah, basically yeah. instead of a night out, you have a night in and you just like intentionally be with each other and do something that instead of going to a movie, which isn't always the most bonding type of date, you know, there's different types. Yeah. Um, or dinner in a movie, you could make dinner and instead of if you usually, you know, aren't necessarily with each other fully mentally, I'm saying that's natural. People like to enjoy why they eat. Not everyone always likes to have a sit down dinner. Although kudos to you if you do that every single night. <laughs> I'm a fan. Although I do like watching TV while eating, it's fun. Yeah, you sit at the table, you have a nice dinner, you talk to each other, you're focused and you're mentally there. Yeah. And that's a date. You get dressed up like you were going out, that's Ooh, fun, that's fun, you know, like yeah. sometimes that helps with the setting. I think that the, what you're saying about the, yeah, I think what you're saying about the mental thing, about being mentally there and really making it intentional is something that helps because even when we play a game or we do something, we're like, oh, let's do something different, let's do a puzzle, let's eat dinner, you know, sitting down by the table, cooking together, whatever it is, where you just make sure that you're doing something that's connecting. And right. I think that that's what, what helps you keep on dating because if you get too much into a routine and you're not really doing anything different, it can get routine, it can get boring, it can be like, we're not advancing, we're not getting to know right. each other more. Change so, things up. Yeah, keep changing things up and be intentional about your activities together and stuff that you're, yeah. you're doing. What is the balance when it comes to sharing emotions with a partner and being vulnerable versus going to therapy? Right, that's a good question. Well, when your significant other is basically a therapist and is really <laughs> emotionally aware, um, it's really nice, but you can't rely always on your spouse to be the one to like hear all your problems because sometimes they're heavy and you know, you need someone who's not necessarily involved. Yes, that's um, And that's, I guess, how you draw the balance. Yeah, I think objectivity is important. So if you feel like you need that outside perspective, that's good. And also just not dumping everything on your partner because right. It could be too much. Knowing the difference is knowing like when am I sharing to be vulnerable and to connect and to be like I just wanted to tell you about this experience for me. I wanted to tell you about something that happened in my past because I want to share it with you and I want to I want you to get to know me better and I want you know your support versus like you didn't even figure out your own problem yet or you don't have the self-awareness you need to even connect and so you actually you need to go to a therapist or get whatever outside help you need to figure yourself out first before you share. Right. I think that's Definitely the therapists are useful in ways that your spouses aren't and we do help each other because we do understand each other better than probably anyone else will. So that's Sometimes important. Sometimes that's not always what you right. need. Right. And you don't need the person to understand right. you so well in order to help you in a therapeutic right. sense. And so that might be important right. depending on what the situation is. Right. And then in the ways that we could help each other, it's important to try and balance it out just in terms of who's the one helping the other person. One person may need more than the other, but... Um, at times. And it could right, at switch. times. But just make sure there's opportunities for both and you're creating space for... For both people yeah. to share and be vulnerable with each other. Right. Yeah. That's definitely something I learned being married. I would not have been able to say any of this beforehand. <laughs> Probably not. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. You grew a lot. In Thanks to you. Okay, let's keep going. Should we do any more? Yeah, no, these are... Should we be are... done? I'm tired. Woo! Maybe one more. Did I ever reach a place of hopelessness like I'll never meet my soulmate and overcome it? I think... I, I think yes, I did. I definitely got to a place of hopelessness many times, but I really tried my best to keep on getting out of it and to just work on my faith and my strength of character because that's really what kept me going. But I definitely, definitely felt hopeless at times and it was very rough. It was. Mm -hmm. It was. So. I'm sorry. I wish I could have cut it short. Yeah. The waiting. Me too. Yeah, I mean, I was sad right. here and there. I was sad. Right, you're saying. Um, but I don't think it was loneliness. hopelessness. It was more like loneliness and feeling like you know I'm. I can't wait for when it happens. Right now, I don't have you. You would say I still have you. No, that's but that's you different. <laughs> um, yeah, many levels. But yeah, I was sad, but I wasn't hopeless. Baruch Hashem didn't reach a place where where hopelessness had set in. Um, you you did. Definitely. That's sad. It was sad. You guys did good. You Good did questions. Amazing. There's so much. I think we I think we also addressed this one, but we could end off on this one. How do you handle real stubborn disagreements? Because we're both pretty stubborn, so. Yeah. At a certain point, you're just like, I was being stubborn in the hopes that the other person would give in. But, you know, you got to do like a risk versus reward cost benefit analysis. And at a certain point, you're just like, wow, not worth it. Who cares anymore? Even though, like, I do care about the thing I was being stubborn about, but I just need to not be arguing with you anymore and 
we'll just let it go. Yeah. I think one of us, us, you know, one person might get to that point first. Right. Um, and that's okay. You don't yeah. have to be like, You just oh, gotta give um, the other person time, though, like, to get to that point. And it's okay if you are if you get to that point first and you're just like, you know what, let it go on your own. And the other, and you give in to the other person, um, even though you didn't want to, you really didn't want it. <laughs> uh, you really, really didn't want it. Right. But it's not worth it. It does not pay. Right. It felt like it paid, so that's why you were so stubborn for a while. Yeah, um, when something's really important to you, you can get very worked up about it, especially if you're a very passionate, strong-minded person, and we both are. We got so much better at it over time to really just understand that things are really not important. It's not important to be right. It, it's important to convey things that you feel are important for the other person to know, but it's not important to be right just for the sake of being right. Like, the reward of um, being connected and feeling the love from each other that's the most important. So it, if you're feeling stubborn about something and if you can take a step back and think about it and be like, is this really important? Is this really something worth being worked up over? And is this worth disconnecting from my partner right. because we love each other and it's a shame that we're letting this, a lot of times very, very silly things right. that just come up and we get really stubborn about our mm -hmm. own way of doing something or the way we think about something or the way we grew up makes us think a certain way or feel a certain way about something, but it's not important. It right. really isn't. That's true. And sometimes, right, sometimes it's silly. Sometimes you could feel threatened because you feel like the thing you're disagreeing about, it might threaten the relationship it feels like, or you're worried the other person isn't going to be there for you. So in those cases, even if you're arguing, the way you let that go is just by, first you have to realize the reason why you're arguing is because you're feeling threatened, you know, that the other person isn't going to be there for you and doesn't have you. So those times you just got to like realize what the problem is and reassure that even though you're arguing about something, right, just doesn't let matter. the other person know it's okay that we're you. arguing. We still love each other. Everything's right. good. It's gonna be good. You brought up a really great point And I think I talked about it in my self-awareness video a couple videos back I talked about the biggest reason that I think we don't want to become self-aware And then I talked about three reasons why it's really important and this example shows that because you have to realize What the problem is and have that awareness before you're able to move forward So if you're not self-aware then you're not going to be able to you know reaffirm that with each other and move forward Right once you realize what is causing the fight it might not even be the fight itself it might be the other person is worried or frightened that you might not be there for them because of this thing which might be a serious thing even some there's some serious right. you know things that you could disagree on but the main thing is that you're you know promising to be there for each other and, and that's the priority of the relationship right. is the love and the connection right and that can usually settle even the, the toughest biggest of arguments. yeah more, most stubborn arguments even if you're not settling the actual argument making everything better you're getting to a place of resolution and getting to right. a place of so connection the, again you have to acknowledge that like might not be able to have an answer for this specific argument, but it doesn't matter because we're still here for each other right. and we always will be. Yes. Okay, does that wrap it up? Yeah. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> this video. It was really fun for me. And, and it was eye-opening for me. It was eye-opening for me. You guys asked, that you yeah, said. all the questions you asked prompted us to think and discuss really cool ideas and yeah. concepts about our marriage and, you know, life. The questions you asked were coming from people who really want to yeah. grow we got and deep. be better. Yeah, you all are awesome. So good job even asking the questions because asking something is half the answer already. If you're looking, if you're looking... <laughs> For the answer, I think that you're already on your way. If you liked this Q&A on love and found it valuable in any way, please give it a big thumbs up. It really, really supports my channel. <laughs> If you loved watching this video as much as we loved making it, spread the love and share it with a friend who you think could benefit from it. Let us know what you think about the discussion that we had today. Leave us a comment. We would love to hear your feedback. And also let me know what other videos you would like to see me make. What other topics. Um, Whether or not you want me to be in it. <laughs> Only sometimes. We'll have him guest appear here and there. Let me know what topics you're interested in discussing because I really want to make content that is valuable to you and things that you would appreciate. If you're interested in my coaching services, check out the description below for my email where you can reach out to me. Remember to always be yourself and more importantly, be, be your best, best self. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.